Figure 2 shows a sketch of part of the graph y equals f of x, where f of x is equal to 2 modulus of 3 minus x plus 5, where x is greater than or equal to 0. Now part A is asking us to state the range of f. And what the range of any graph means is all the possible values that y, the y coordinate of all the points on the graph, can take. So here we can see that the lowest y coordinate on this graph is here, at whatever this value is here. This is the minimum point on the graph, and therefore the range must be whatever this value is and upwards, because y can take any form that is that number or greater than it. And all we need to do is figure out what this number is. So if we consider the graph, um, and we can do some rough sketches to visualise this, if we consider the graph in its first form, if you like, where y is equal to modulus 3 minus x, without any of these transformations of 2 and plus 5, if we consider when it was just y equals modulus of 3 minus x, we can say that the graph, to draw it very roughly, looked a bit like this. And the main important thing that we need to note now is that here it was touching the x-axis. So regardless of what the x-coordinate was, its y-coordinate was zero. Now, the next transformation that was added to it is that it was multiplied by 2. Now, adding this transformation onto any graph simply means that all of its y-coordinates were multiplied by 2, which would just make the gradient of these lines a bit steeper. But if the y-coordinate here was 0, 0 multiplied by 2 means that this coordinate, where it's touching the x-axis, the y-coordinate is 0 still. And then the final transformation added to it, if we think of it like that, is this plus 5. And plus 5 means that all of the y-coordinates, 5 was added to it. It was moved up by 5. And this is the graph that we can see here that's drawn y equals f of x. So if we went from on this graph here, y being equal to 0 at this minimum point, and then 5 was added to it, so essentially it moved from here up to here, 5 was added to this y coordinate, which means it moved up by 5, and therefore the y coordinate of this point is no longer a question mark, but a 5 as it moved from 0 to 5. And therefore the range of this, the range of values that y can take on this graph is 5 or anything greater than 5, which means that we can say the range of the graph is f of x, as this is how we write range, we say that f of x is greater than or equal to 5. Now, for part b, we're asked to solve the equation f of x is equal to a half x plus 30. Uh, and we know that f of x is equal to 2 multiplied by the modulus of 3 minus x plus 5. So the question is essentially asking us to solve 2 multiplied by 3, the modulus of 3 minus x plus 5 equals a half x plus 30. Now the problem here is having these straight lines, these symbols that um, imply there's a modulus function, um, is that this can take two values. Um, so one way we can take it is that this is this bit is negative and therefore would be written as minus two multiplied by three minus x plus 5, and if we write out the whole thing, equals a half x plus 30. And then if we simplify this a bit, we have minus 6 plus 2x plus 5 equals a half x plus 30. Uh, and we can continue to solve this to find the value of x. So if we have 2x minus 1 equals a half x plus 30, and then we add one to both sides 
and take away a half x, we have 3 over 2x is equal to 31. And therefore, if we times 31 by 2, if we times both sides by 2 and divide by 3, we have the x is equal to 62 over 3. We can also consider um, what if this modulus was positive. Uh, and here, we wouldn't add in the minus sign that we did before. And we'd have 2 multiplied by 3 minus x plus 5 is equal to a half x plus 30. Uh, and if we solve this the exact same way that we did before, so 6 minus 2x plus 5 equals a half x plus 30, and therefore 11 minus 2x is equal to a half x plus 30. So if we add 2x to both sides and take away 30 from both sides, we're now left with 5 over 2x is equal to minus 19. And then if we times both sides by 2 and divide by 5, we get that in the end x is equal to minus 38 over 5. So now we have two possible answers for x. But the problem is, if we look back at the question, back at the start, we were told that x is greater than or equal to 0. And we can also see this on the graph, that this value here is definitely greater than 0. And therefore, out of these two possible solutions for x that we have, only one of them can be right, because this solution here is negative. And therefore, we can say that this is incorrect. And so x must be equal to 62 over 3. Now, for the three marks available for this question, our first mark comes from using the negative form of the modulus. Um, our second method mark comes from actually solving this uh, and finding a value of x. And then we get an answer mark for using for finding the actual value of x, which is 62 over 3. So for part c, we're told that given that the equation f of x equals k, where k is a constant, has two distinct roots, state the set of possible values of k. Now, if we're told that k is a constant, which just means it's, it's a number, it's not a function, it's a number, and it has two distinct roots, we know that k, first off, must be a horizontal line if it's a constant, and two distinct roots means it has to cross the graph of y equals f of x twice. So, for example, um, we don't know that it is, but if k was here, um, we can see it's a horizontal line with a point of intersection here and here, uh, and therefore it would be a possible value of k. Now, we can see that the points where k does not have two distinct roots, first off, is here. Because if k was less than or equal to whatever this value is here, then it would have no roots, and we're told it must have two. But if k was less than whatever this value is here, which we actually worked out in part a to be 5, so we can say that this is 5, um, and if k was less than 5, and it fell somewhere, anywhere in this empty space, then f of x equals k would have no roots and therefore that counts as what we're told in the question and therefore this can't be true. So we know that k has to be greater than 5 because as well if it was equal to 5 we can see here there's only one point and therefore it would only have one root which again counts as the question because we're told it has two. So therefore k has to be greater than 5 and we know this. Additionally, if you look at this graph, we know that f of x uh, is only defined when x is greater than or equal to 0, which means here, at this point, um, and we don't know what this value is yet, but if k is greater than whatever this unknown value is, there's only one root um, because it only passes through this line. There is nothing this line stops here because we're told that x is greater than or equal to zero 
And so if k is greater than this question mark, this unknown value, if k is greater than this, then there's only one root, which again is not what we're told in the question. So now we know that k has to fall between 5 and this unknown value. So we need to work out what this unknown value is. So we can see on the graph that here x is equal to 0 because it lies on the y-axis. And therefore, if we use the equation um, 2 multiplied by the modulus of 3 minus x plus 5, and we substitute in when x is 0, we're left with 2 multiplied by 3 minus 0 plus 5 is equal to y. Uh, and since the modulus of 3, um, because that's what we're left with here, the modulus of 3 just means to make 3 positive, but since 3 is already positive, this is just multiplying 3 by 2. So we have 6 plus 5 is equal to y, and therefore y is equal to 11. So we know that this is no longer an unknown value, but this is an 11. And so we know that k has to be greater than 5, as we've stated over here, but k also has to be less than or equal to 11. And the reason it's less than or equal and not just less than is that you can see that if k was equal to 11, we have a point of intersection here and here. So it has two roots uh, and would therefore um, fit the um, criteria we're given. So now we know that k has to be less than or equal to 11, but greater than 5. Uh, and to write this for the answer, we need to write this in set notation. Um, and this is just the way we do this is k colon, and then k is in the real numbers, and this is denoted using this notation. And then we just say that k is greater than 5, but less than or equal to 11, which is what we have already stated in just before in the question. And then another curly bracket. And that's how we write our answer out in set notation. Now, for the two marks available for this question, our first mark just comes from implying somewhere that there must be two intersections. Uh, and this can be implied by essentially saying somewhere that k has to be greater than 5 or less than or equal to 11. And we've done that in two places. But one of the places we've done that is up here. Um, it could have also been down here. And then our second mark is an answer mark, and that is just for writing the answer out in this form, in set notation, stating quite clearly that k must be greater than 5 or less than or equal to 11.